So, uh, yeah, let's have a, a little chat about uh, how you made this work. As I see, you are completely working in the box uh, just with Ableton and MIDI controllers, basically. Yeah, basically, I mean, this is how I work in the studio. This is a simplified version. Mm -hmm. So, of course, in, in the studio, we have hardware, synthesizers, and yeah. other things we can use. But um, when I'm at home, so if I'm using uh, my home setup, which is just a Mac Mini and maybe one or two controllers, yeah. uh, this is how I like to work. Um, I found over the last two years, kind of my approach to making music has completely changed. And um, this is thanks to Will, who's in the other room, and uh, he'll, no. be, he'll be part of the, the Tom and thing later as Hybrisil. But um, yeah, just literally doing all the arrangements using APC 40s and um, kind of these are working uh, in a sense as like an old school mixing mm. desk. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I write everything. People are always asking me. I, I write everything on a, a on all the channels. Uh, I write them down on a piece of paper. I kind of learn the channels. Yeah. So I spend some time. And with that, um, you're also mixing the track. Yeah. So but I assume I, you have them like grouped in thematical groups. For example, one channel is always like the hi hat. Or yeah, I'm kind of like working always. It's like channel one is the kick, and then mm. two is the hat. This also it makes it means it's easy. For when it makes you more dexterous when you're using your fingers, yeah. to, you know, so at least you, you know and... Yeah, you can actually build the muscle memory. Yeah, 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 but yeah. that's, and it, it kind of works for me uh, sort of mentally to to learn it that way. And then of course, um, it depends. Sometimes I'm using very uh, long stems mm -hmm. or long pieces of audio, especially if I'm doing remixes like I've just done for Chris Leaving. Well, actually that was done last year, but you know, that's where I'm literally, you know, um, just assigning the channels and um, playing the stems. But it's also a great way of having this human touch, mm -hmm. you know, which I think is something that's obviously really important, you know, yeah. to, to rather than moving blocks around the screen, which is, which is, what, which, which is what I was doing for years. You yeah. Know? yeah, so I was actually super impressed because in a sense, all these audio parts, they are somewhat static because they are like set in yeah, stone. Yeah. And I found it really impressive how you made it all sound organic and fluent in a yeah. sense. I guess you also use the uh, send and return effects. Yeah, right? I'm uh, using filters and um, yeah, of course, assigning filters and delays with the tractor with the F1. Ah, yeah. So that's with uh, with different delays and mm. then um, and then reverbs as well on the, with, on each channel. And I'm I guess I mean I don't know maybe for most people it would be the same, but you yeah. know you need good reverbs, good uh, delays, and uh, that's it. I mean, and then obviously. It's all about building the loops or building the drum sounds. Kind of like I, I have a huge uh, library of sounds mm. to, to, to refer to. So, yeah. so like everything from, you know, obviously Roland drum sounds to organic things that I've recorded, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. and that really helps having a really great library, you know, so that you can literally throw things in, try it. Yeah. And, uh, and um, especially in my old, old days when I was touring, um, you know, you need to get things done quickly, you know, yeah. but not badly, but you need to have a st good, strong ideas, you yeah. know. So when you um, prepare the uh, individual stems, do you actually always uh, think about them in terms of tracks and groupings already? Or do you uh, often also create tracks from pre-existing stems that were not really meant to be together and then on the fly uh, something interesting happens? Yeah, both, or? both. I mean, um, it depends. So sometimes you're making things and consolidating it, creating another um, channel, another yeah. loop. So that, that, that kind of thing can happen. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, if the, you, it, like I said, well, like I've mentioned, but especially with working in this way, you, you can get some very nice sort of human sort of mistakes, touches. Yeah, like for in, example, when you enter a hi-hat and you still hear the yeah, last bit from the yeah, previous hi-hat that yeah. you weren't supposed to hear, it's like this. Yeah, stuff like that, or vocals, especially using, when, you're using, yeah, when you're using vocal samples and you just get a little clip, a little hiss, or mm. you know, the Things like that you'd never do if yeah, you were, you know. If you were just clip launching. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, that, yeah that's and it, this this really works for me and and what you what you guys have been listening to is kind of like I did a I was home the last two weeks and um, I had to do a um, 
a DJ mix for, mm. for Alan Fitzpatrick, and I don't have a DJ set at home anymore. So you did it with Ableton. So I did it with the whole thing with Ableton. Oh, but I actually did it once, and it was like a huge <laughs> pain because you had yeah. to beat match with the uh, right. with the warping, not with the yeah, warping, yeah. but with the pitching function. Yeah. Did you do it like this? Well, as no, well? no. This with this moves with this. Basically, what happened was that I I thought, well, you know what? I've got all these sounds. I was building all these libraries, so mm. I just went through all my tracks, and um, so I started building a live setup. So, and this is kind of like, a, a, this could be a Radio Slave Live that I could take on the road. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I mean, it, it could, be, it could um, expand. Um, I'm quite into using things like just, to make it simple, and USB is great when it works, so using things yeah. like the, the Boutique uh, SH01, stuff like that. It actually sounds super powerful. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but that's a really nice uh, yeah. add-on, especially in our studio. It's a really quick way of, Especially if you're making techno or you want n nice... Just actually being able to twist yeah, the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's also it's USB as well. And I think for people who are starting out, it's it's a really nice way to get into making music without having too much gear, yeah. which, I th you know, which I think for a lot of people can be, can be quite overwhelming. Yeah, and also distraction sometimes. Yeah. You get lost <laughs> yeah. in the gear and you yeah. need to learn all this stuff. But, but it's also, and yeah. again, you know, for maybe for people, DJs or aspiring DJs or people who like electronic music or, like, or are interested in making it, mm -hmm. I think um, creating loops or maybe even buying, uh, purchasing sample packs no. rather than, you know, buying CDJs, things mm -hmm. like that, is, is a really nice way to be more creative, you know, because a no. lot of the music that I've always been into, whether it's Jeff Mills or Rob Hood, yeah. It's all very loop based, yeah. you know. Even though it has lots of movement, you know, but it's it's predominantly. Yeah, I feel like not not just vinyl, but actually also the CDJ uh, yeah. way of DJing uh, is maybe even a bit uh, uh, not as futuristic as it could be at the moment. No. So actually, uh, even though some people are like purists when yeah. it comes to the classic form of yeah. uh, having a certain set of decks, yeah. uh, this might actually be a much more yeah. future proof. And I mean, people uh, are still right. making, people are still making, um, um, what's going to say, people are still making lock grooves, you know? Yeah. And um, so there's still an interest in that. And of course, you know, I think there's this, there's this revival, especially with 90s kind of techno, which is very loopy. Yeah. Um, it depends what you're into, it depends what you're making, yeah. you know? But this, this kind of way, for, it's also made me, I, I love dub techno and I love dub and, you know, working this way, especially with the, the faders, mm -hmm. And the knobs, you know, big reverbs, you know, you can get really into it. Yeah. You know, it's a really, it's really good fun, and it's, and you can make this very spacious, wide sound with just a few elements. You know, so it's, really yeah. good, it's good fun. You know, that's what it should be. Yeah. <laughs> then one more question. I really enjoyed the, uh, your use of break beats, or right. in general, but yeah, also yeah. in this performance. And I was wondering if there's any uh, special tips that you have on processing uh, break beats to make them work in house and techno tracks. Um, I think it's about, I mean, I'm always cutting the break, break depends. You have to find the right breaks and it's not, yeah. e it's not easy, to especially working. I love hip hop and that's where my roots are and some breaks just don't work yeah. being uh, pitched. I think what you used here was the think break? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm using two different breaks. There's, yeah. a, there's, there's one from a sample, from a, I think I sample it from the UK Garage track. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm always, again, I'm sampling a lot of, things and um, yeah it's, it's interesting I've, these two actually work particularly well at 100 like 130 bpm which is what this, yeah. this set was and mm. um, it depends it's a fine line i think we're using breaks yeah. sometimes when it works comes to the, when it comes to the eq of the break beats where do you usually cut off the low end to make space for like the kick and bass um again that all depends on what you write what, what you're making i mean i've mm. been making a lot of tracks recently where the breaks or the, the, I cut the break beats up, but mm -hmm. they're very prominent. Yeah. So the kicks are quite held back. So EQing, I don't, I don't have any like a, a particular setup when it comes to EQs. Yeah. You know, it all, it all depends on the track. And again, you know, it, it depends. You, sometimes you want the breaks to really be there in the forefront of the mix. And sometimes yeah. they might be held back, especially if you're using a 4-4 four, four ki kick rhythm then maybe they want to be held back slightly, you know? Mm. It depends or you want, to, you want it to be like, ah, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, really, really lovely performance. Uh, thanks a lot for coming cool. by. Cool, no, thank you very much. It's great to do this, yeah. yeah this cool. is only my second time doing this kind of live uh, setup. So no, thank yeah. you very much. Amazing. So uh, as I saw, uh, actually already a few people are saying hi in the chats. So uh, shout outs to Heinbach. 
also shoutouts to Matthew Johnson, who's also in the chat here. Cool, and he's man. actually also going to be uh, here uh, on the stream later. We did a pre-recorded uh, session at his studio, so that's going to be streamed. And while we're at it, uh, you guys can actually ask questions, and he uh, is actually going to be in the chat and going to reply to your questions. And now we're doing a quick break, like 30 minutes or so, and then we'll be back with uh, Inhalt der Nacht, who prepared a live set as well. Cool. I'd say, see you later. Cool, thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.